Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about hit points and warp markers in Cubase. So one of the things that comes up over and over in Cubase is this option to have hit points and the option to use warp markers. They're both ways to help you deal with your audio, almost like MIDI, and the way you can change tempo and move audio notes around. And they put the option for hit points and warp markers in all kinds of different locations. You'll find them in your project view. You'll find them in dedicated editors certain functions you'll turn on, and next thing you know, you'll be looking at warp markers and or hit points. And many times you'll be watching other tutorials and you'll see people working with hit points or warp markers, and they'll be moving them around the screen trying to describe to you some function, but you'll be confused because you simply just don't know what the warp marker and the hit point is in the first place. So let's talk about how we can add these things, remove these things, move them around a little bit, and just kind of the general overview of how to get comfortable with hit points and warp markers. Let's start out talking about the hit points. One of the first things you're going to want to do to get comfortable with a hit point in Cubase is to take some piece of audio or loop, double click on it, which opens it up in the sample editor, and you want to go to the tab that says hit points. If you immediately go to the button below the tab and it says edit hit points and then you press that, that lights up the hit points which are these long lines that go between the different samples. And at that point, you can take your mouse over any one of them, and it turns into a double arrow. You can click it and drag it either way, left or right. Once you've done that, if you come back over into this tab again, there's a button farther down that says Remove All. If you click on that, all the hit points go away. So with those three steps, you'll immediately get some kind of idea and feel for how to navigate with hit points. By turning on the Edit Hit Point button, grabbing a hit point with your mouse and moving it, and then ultimately saying Remove All. The next thing you're going to want to do is kind of have a little bit of fun with these hit points. If I turn this edit hit point back on again, one of the first things I can do is audition the different sections between the hit points. If I move my mouse between any set of hit points, I get a little speaker and I can click on that speaker and hear whatever audio is in between there. I can adjust the volume of that audio by going up in my toolbar. And there's a little volume control to the preview area here. And then I can click on any sample and hear what I have in between my hit points. Another fun, interesting thing to do is you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard just by pressing the right arrow and quickly move through the different samples and the different hit points. And I can move backwards with the left arrow. So what are hit points and why do you need them? They're basically anchors that Cubase uses to figure out where the beats are in your audio. So for example, if you speed things up or slow it down, Cubase then knows what to do with the audio to keep it on the same beat in your project. But it's not restricted just to that. There's many uses for hit points. For example, if we go over in this left area, there's a drop down that says create, and you have all kinds of options for slices or the groove, create markers, regions, vents, warp markers, MIDI notes. For example, if I hit this first option that says slices, I can then open up all those different audio parts, take little slices out of them, the hit points just created, play them in my project, or move them onto a sampler track, There's just all kinds of creative options you can do. And if you want a detailed breakdown of all these different options, see examples of how they're used, be sure to click the link in the description so you can get access to the digital audio manual. But the thing I want to focus on today mostly, how do we move around these different markers? How do we put them in? How do we get them out of here? This is the kind of stuff that you forget over time. Let's start by drawing some of these in. How do we do that? You can always draw a hit point by holding your Alt key where your cursor now turns into a pencil tool. You can simply just click anywhere and you will automatically get new hit points. Again, once you've created them, you can drag them around wherever you want them. But to get rid of them, hold your Shift key down and then your cursor turns into a little X. And then you can click and drag over that hit point and it will erase it or disable it or get it out of there. You can also hold Shift drag over multiple hit points and then they will go away. Where this is very useful is when you have these sections and for example I play this hit and then I play this hit. Instead of it stopping right here I'd really like it to play all the way through to this next hit. And the reason it doesn't is because I have these other hit points in the way. So to get rid of these I hold shift drag over these hit points and now they're gone. Now if I click on this little section You can freely play that whole area. Another option that comes up, sometimes you want to lock these hit points. You move your cursor over the line of a hit point and it turns into the double arrow. If you move it all the way to the top, just before it hits the ruler, in this case it turns into an X and it says disable the hit point. Same way it did if I held shift. 
If I click on this, it disables the hit point. If I keep my cursor here, now it changes to an option that says lock the hit point. And if I hit that again, that hit point remains, even though I may do some other editing, it removes these other hit points. Editing, for example, over on the left, these various threshold controls and the intensity, that will cause all these other hit points to disappear. The hit point that I locked in place still remains. Another thing you may wonder about, you can see these various little triangles at the very top. These are hit points that have been created. It may be visible or not visible for any number of reasons, but they remain there. And by clicking on them, quickly put another hit point back in place. But again, if you want to get rid of all of these at one time, just come back over and hit remove all. Everything is erased. All right, let's shift over from hit points to what's called warp markers. As we stay in the sampler editor and we have this tab that says hit points, move up to the one that says audio warp and click on that. Unlike the hit points, don't automatically have these lines going up and down. Let's put some in first. I'm going to go over here and hit the option that says free warp. And then my mouse turns into kind of like a double arrow little clock. I'm going to hover over this area and click. I'm going to do the same thing at this peak. I'm going to hover over it and click. And I'll do one more. Come over here and hover it and click. Now I have these three lines that look like hit points. The big difference between the hit points and these warp markers is these warp markers now allow me to actually take the piece of audio, click on it with the mouse, and then I can move it and basically stretch it out, completely altering the audio itself. If I switch over to my range selection and I make a selection of this area, now I can play this like a loop. And then I can change and edit my warp markers. I'm gonna drag this over or drag it this way. So where the hit points kind of automatically drawn, the warp markers on the other hand, allow me to actually start changing the audio. If something's out of time or I need to make some kind of adjustment, I can click with a warp marker and actually stretch the audio. Now we know we can draw them by turning on the free warp and just clicking someplace. I'm actually gonna draw one out here as well. But unlike the hit points, where typically you'll hold Alt to draw it, you wanna hit the Alt key to erase them and you just click on it and then it's gone. You can also hold the Alt key and drag over multiple warp markers and then erase them just like that. And then like we had kind of before, there's a reset button. And if I click that, all the warp markers are taken out. When you want to grab and move the warp marker, you want to kind of pay attention how you approach it. If you just kind of click over it, you may wind up drawing another warp marker instead of moving the one you have. What you want to look for is as you get close to it, a little cursor will kind of snap onto it. And then at that point, you can move it as you need to. The other main thing to know about warp markers, this is probably one of the most important things, is you kind of want to think of them always in groups of three. And by that, I mean whatever the original warp marker is that you're working on, that's your number one warp marker. If you just move that, you will also move all the audio surrounding that warp marker. Whereas if you put another warp marker as a boundary on the right and then on the left of whatever warp marker you're working with, then you will only move that warp marker within that boundary. That's a very important thing to understand because if you start clicking and adding warp markers and you try to adjust them and you're not sure there's boundaries around it, you can very easily change all of your audio with very unexpected results. So always create your warp markers, either knowing you have a boundary of two other warp markers or simply just click other warp markers around it. Then you can freely move your warp marker without affecting anything else. So once again, click the warp marker to create it, hold your alt key to remove it, either one of them or groups of them, or come up to your reset button and remove all of them. So hopefully that gives you a basic overview of how to add, edit, and remove these hit points and warp markers. Now the next time you see somebody demonstrating them, using them in different examples, you're gonna have a little clearer understanding of what these tools do in the first place. And if you're experienced with them, maybe this will be a good reminder so you won't be confused next time you're in a project and you have to move some warp markers around or add and edit some hit points. So take that information, go make some great music, and I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase, WaveLab, and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we talked about the hit points and the warp markers. We started out looking at the hit points, how to create them, edit them, move them around the screen. We saw how we could addition different sections within the hit points and even create slices that we could use for samples. We moved on to the warp markers, 
And again, we learned how to write them on the screen, move them around, saw the effects of adding warp markers, how to remove them, and how they can stretch the audio and change things either in time or out of time. Another set of great core features to help you do some of the things you may be trying to do. And we're going to continue to explore all these different features and functions in Cubase. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.